I went grocery shopping at Walmart yesterday and I know we've talked about inflation and the rising cost of food and how to save money on groceries ad nauseum, especially over the last couple of years. But as I was putting items into my cart that I frequently purchase and keep on hand for my family of five, I started to think about how my shopping habits have changed and how those frequent purchases have changed, how I have swapped out some items for others that are more cost efficient. So I thought I would share with you some of the swaps, some of the substitutions that I have made to frequently purchased items in our family grocery haul so that we can save a little money. We're a family of five, me and my husband and our three children who are ages 14, 11, and 10. And we need to pack lunches for school. We need to have snacks available for leaving the house for various activities and sports. And even though I have a channel that revolves around making food, I don't have a ton of time to just make everything from scratch. And we don't want to give up all of the luxuries and conveniences in our grocery haul. So some of the swaps that I'm making are things that maybe aren't necessarily essential, but that if we're being honest, a lot of us are purchasing, especially in a family kitchen. We're big fans of frozen waffles in this household. It's something that I enjoy eating and that's really easy for the kids to make for themselves. They just pop a couple of those in the toaster and we typically like ours with peanut butter or maybe a little bit of banana on top. But I'm not buying them as much anymore because I've noticed that they've more than doubled in price. So a lot of times I'm picking up these instead. These are English muffins. And item for item, they're not less than the waffles, but the serving size of the waffles is usually two. And when I take that into consideration, getting six English muffins for $1.50, instead of getting 10 waffles or just five servings for well over two bucks, this is a better deal and it's just as good a vessel for peanut butter and banana as the waffles are. And it can even be used to make some really delicious breakfast sandwiches if you are one of those people who likes like a homemade egg McMuffin. My kids have been on a huge yogurt kick lately, especially the Greek yogurt, which I love because it has, you know, anywhere from 10 to 14 grams of protein per little cup. But even though these little cups are pretty convenient for snacking, for portioning, for packing and lunches, it would take six of these at least to equal one big 32 ounce container of yogurt. You would have to do a little extra work here because you'd have to portion it out yourself into a container. But typically speaking, depending on the brands that you buy, this big container is going to be a much better value and a lower cost per ounce than the individual cups. They make this already flavored. Of course, you'd be stuck with just one flavor instead of multiple flavors. Some people actually prefer the option to flavor it themselves. And if you are looking for a little hack where this is concerned, what I like to flavor my yogurt with is not jello or pudding mixes the way that some people do. I actually use little drink flavoring packets. I just sprinkle a little of that into a bowl of yogurt or maybe put about two packets into one entire container and it makes really delicious flavored yogurt. And then I can add whatever I would normally add to these cups, like a little bit of granola or cereal or some fresh fruit. And speaking of drink mixes. I feel like these can be a really great swap for when you still want to have something fun and flavorful to drink, but soda has become cost prohibitive. I feel like the price of Cokes have just skyrocketed in the last year, even taking the crazy inflation into consideration. I feel like it's one of the items that have increased the most. I think I saw in my Walmart yesterday that a 12 pack of Coca-Cola is just shy of eight bucks. I think it was like $7 and 68 cents or something like that. And it came out to around 65 cents a can, which is not terrible, I guess, especially if you have some wiggle room in your budget. But when you consider the fact that this box of drink powders is under $5, it comes out to 16 cents per packet for this box of 30, 16 cents versus 65 cents. I mean, that can make a lot of difference. I do want to add here that drinks in general, things like Cokes, any kind of alcohol, sports drinks, chocolate milk, seltzers, those come out of a different part of our budget. We don't spend grocery money on those items. We spend what we call recreation or entertainment budget money on those items because we do understand that they're superfluous. I mean, we like to have them if we can, but if we needed to, we could cut those from our budget. And historically speaking, in really lean times, we have cut that recreation line item from our budget or redirected that money elsewhere. With the exception of tortilla chips, I don't buy a lot of chips anymore. Potato chips or corn chips, you know, occasionally to have like Frito chili pies or something. And I noticed that even Doritos, one of our favorite chips, it's like $4 for a little small bag that has nine servings in it. Although let's face it, a lot of us are probably eating more than one serving if we're getting the big, you know, the best economical value bag. What I buy a lot of instead are pretzels because I can get around a pound of pretzels 
various shapes, either the twists or the little rods for a little over $2 at my Walmart and the same thing at my Aldi. And I know, I know it's not the same thing. It doesn't have the same flavor, but my kids like pretzels with a little bit of peanut butter or cream cheese, or maybe even a little bit of ranch dressing to dip them in. Yes, I know ranch dressing. It's just a thing. It's just a thing here. We put ranch on everything, even our pretzels. And usually my kids are taking a pretty reasonable portion where that's concerned instead of going through like a single bag of potato chips or Doritos in one day. <laughs> And speaking of pretzels, if your family really likes the pretzel thins, I was really excited to see these in my Walmart for the first time. This is a great value brand, a dupe of the pretzel slims. Aldi has had one for a while, but I haven't seen them in my Walmart yet. Now this is not as good a value as buying the regular pretzels, but I actually think ounce for ounce, it's still a better deal than buying chips. And if you're a person who's just partial to those, I just wanted to make you aware that Walmart has these now in their house brand. So much cheaper than the, um, um, name brand. Even though it usually saves money to forgo the individual pre-portioned snacks and just buy the big package and portion them out ourselves, I do understand the value and the convenience of having those pre-portioned items, especially if you're packing lunches or if you're going out of the house for different activities. So instead of picking up the 20 count box of individual bags of Cheez-Its at my Walmart for $9.86, I picked up this package of 20 count peanut butter crackers for $6.84. The same number of packages, in my opinion, a little bit more satisfying snack because it's got a few more calories and a little bit more protein in the Cheez-Its, but I'm saving about 30%. You don't need to tell me that a lot of the things that I'm mentioning are not necessities. They're not really essential to our overall nutrition, but if I'm being honest, I think these are frequent flyers, not just in our kitchen, but in a lot of family kitchens. And the kinds of things that we're packing in lunches or that we're taking as snacks or just keeping on hand, especially if there are kids in the household. And if there's one thing I've learned about making changes. It's that if we make too drastic of changes in too short amount of time, it's not sustainable and we end up giving up. So what I'm trying to do is sort of create a bridge, you know, give some swaps that still allow us to have some of these luxuries, but spend a little bit less money and maybe change our buying habits over time. I find that I am purchasing applesauce cups less and less. They have gone up to over $2 for a six pack. And when you price it out per unit, it's around 37, 38 cents per applesauce cup, which isn't too bad. But I picked up this three pound bag of mandarins yesterday at my Walmart for $3.98. That's just the standard price, not even a rollback or a sale price like I might find at Aldi. There are 22 little oranges in here. I know because I took them out and I counted. And 22 oranges for $3.98 comes out to 18 cents per orange. So basically, my kids can take two of these for the same price that it costs for one of these. I mean, I feel like these are like the perfect lunchbox or after school or like sports snack. Very portable. You don't need anything to eat them with. You just peel them and eat them. Actually, that sounds really good. I think I may peel one and eat one right now. There's probably some song about peeling oranges. Maybe the Wiggles or... What do, what do the kids watch this day? Bluey, I keep hearing about Bluey. Another example of the whole fruit being a better deal. This three pound bag of Pink Lady apples was around four bucks. There are eight apples in here, so it comes out to 50 cents per apple. So even though I'm paying a little bit more for the apple, also this is probably gonna be much more satisfying for my kids, especially since my kids are getting older. And I'm sure you already know this, but it bears repeating. Make sure you know when certain fruits and vegetables are in season in the part of the world where you live. And if you're buying fresh produce, swap out the in-season things for the out-of-season things. It is winter right now. We're actually coming to the end of winter, it's March. But for winter, I'm usually looking to buy things Things like pears and apples and citrus like oranges. In another month or two, the berries will start to be really good and they'll get really cheap because they're in season. And then another month or so after that, we'll be into things like watermelons and cantaloupes and all kinds of veggies. Summertime is such a great time for produce. And if fresh produce is out of season or it's not readily available in your area or it just becomes cost prohibitive, I will tell you that I use frozen or canned produce, especially vegetables, all the time. This is my opinion. You can take it or leave it. But I feel like there's a lot of misinformation about the quality and nutritiousness of this stuff, especially when you're buying it just plain without any added oils or seasonings. I mean, the only ingredient in this bag of frozen green beans is green beans. The difference is 
Typically speaking, these things are picked and processed and packaged within 24 to 48 hours, whereas the fresh green beans will have had to be picked and packaged and put on a truck and transported to the grocery store, and then maybe sitting in storage until the older produce sells, and then sitting out for I don't know how long until I pick it up and buy it. I'm not trying to tell you not to buy fresh produce. I buy plenty of that as well. I'm just saying that do a little research if you haven't been buying this and see if it saves you a little money, and also make sure that you know where your information is coming from as far as the quality of this stuff. Since we're talking so much about snacks, I want to mention today's sponsor, nuts.com, because it's a great way to get high quality, affordable snacks sent right to your doorstep from a third generation family owned company right here in the US with so much variety to offer. Plus they're offering something free for new customers today. So stay tuned. I ordered this 48 hours ago and it is here on my doorstep. I mean like less than two days and it has already arrived. Nuts.com is your one-stop shop for freshly roasted nuts, dried fruits, sweets, different kinds of snacks, pantry staples like specialty flowers. They even offer coffee and tea and they roast their nuts and pop their corn the same day that it ships. So you are guaranteed top-notch quality and freshness. I got several bags of dried fruit in my order here because my kids really like this stuff. They actually requested it. So these are the sweetened banana chips and the half dried apricots. And then this is the organic fruit sampler. So I'm gonna open it up and see what's inside. Organic mixed fruit, organic pineapple chunks. Ooh, I need one of those right now. Only ingredient, organic dried pineapple. Organic dried mango. Oh, this is also a favorite. I'm gonna need a piece of that right now too. Mm -hmm. Yummy. Right now, nuts.com is offering free shipping on orders over $29, plus a free gift for new customers. When you go to nuts.com slash Mindy or visit the link in the description box below. Again, that's nuts.com slash Mindy or visit the link in the description box below. And if you're a new customer, you're gonna get free shipping on an order of just $29 or more, plus a free gift with your purchase. So to get some tasty, high quality snacks and treats from a really great company, feel free to visit that link in the description box below or go to nuts.com slash Mindy. And thank you again to nuts.com for sponsoring today's video. If you were to look in the pantries of people who have children, I think a vast majority of them would probably have some form of goldfish cracker at some season of their child's life. I think a lot of us would even call them essential. <laughs> You can disagree all you want until you have kids who uh, basically live on goldfish crackers and strawberries for like a certain number of years in their life. But they've gotten kind of pricey and honestly, I think it's one of those items that has such a singular taste and texture that it's very hard to dupe. But recently, I brought home a box of these. It's the Walmart brand goldfish. They're called penguins. <laughs> and my oldest daughter says that she likes these better than goldfish. I mean, write it down, document it, let it be known that my children have actually requested these which come in around 20 cents an ounce as opposed to around 30 cents an ounce for the most economical packages of goldfish crackers I could find even considering they were on rollback so if these are a thing that are non-negotiable in your household you might give these a try a family size box is under four bucks and speaking of things that cannot be duplicated I want to talk about Oreo cookies and yes I know that Oreos are not a necessity but again we're just talking about savvy swaps we're talking about small changes we can make to our habits, to our grocery purchases, to save a little bit of money. And if you are in a household that enjoys your Oreo cookies, I'm not saying never buy those, but if you are looking for something to swap out that is still gonna give you that sweetness and that crunchiness, might I recommend these? They're the Stouffer's Animal Cookies, the Iced. I have serious nostalgia when I eat these. They remind me of preschool, and I can get a big 30 ounce, so almost two pounds, for right under $4. The most economical package of double stuff Oreos, because I think those are the only kind worth buying, are $5.98 for the party size, and it comes out to 23 cents per serving at 26 servings in each of those packages. At $3.98, this bag has 28 servings, and it comes out to 
14 cents per serving. And I'm telling you, these things are so good. <laughs> I know that it's not quite the same satisfaction because you don't have the cream filled, they're not chocolate, but if you're looking for that touch of sweetness and just that crunchiness, these will definitely fit the bill. Also, if you just missed that cream filling from the Oreo, I will tell you that these are a fantastic vehicle for dipping into a tub of icing, and I won't tell you how I know that. <laughs> I will admit that while they are not the most cost-effective, Lunchables are definitely a thing in our household. I've got three kids who are packing their lunch most days, and on a week that is particularly busy, or just as a special treat, I will occasionally pick up a Lunchable for the kids to take in their lunch. And while it is pretty easy and much more cost-efficient to dupe the crackers and cheese type Lunchables with just pre-sliced cheese and some crackers and some cold cuts and maybe a few other things. It's a little bit harder to dupe the one that my kids tend to choose and that is the Pizza Lunchable. But instead of picking up the Pizza Lunchables, I've been picking up a big bag of Pizza Rolls. This is the great value brand. It is, didn't do my research on this one, need to look it up. I pay right now less than $10 at Walmart. It comes up I think $9.83. And it says that a serving size is six pizza rolls and there's 22 servings in here. But let's just say since my kids are older that I'm sending eight pizza rolls instead, it comes out to a little over 16 servings in this bag. So when I figure out the price per serving, it comes out to about 61 cents. And by the way, you absolutely can make these and then pack them in a thermos. We just charge our thermos using hot water from the coffee maker, dump it out, and then we'll put the hot food in. And let's be honest, when it comes to pizza rolls, we're usually having to wait a fairly long time for them to cool long enough so it's not like hot lava on your tongue when you bite into them. So actually putting them into a thermos and just letting them stay warm over a few hours would probably make them just the right temperature at lunchtime. Am I right? Speaking of pizza, we have been very into the take and bake pizzas at both all and Walmart. They're very large pizzas. We really only need one to feed our family, but even if we're picking up two so we have leftovers, at somewhere between seven and eight bucks a pop, I feel like it's a really great value, and to us, the pizzas taste just as good as something we're gonna get in like a fast food restaurant. I pulled up the Pizza Hut website just to see, and a large pepperoni pizza is over $17. So after taxes are applied, it's like $25. And that's only if I'm going to the restaurant to pick up the pizza. I'd have to tack on you know, delivery charges and tip if I'm going to have it sent to the house. And if I'm saving money to go pick up the pizza, I might as well just go down the street to the Walmart and pick up a take and bake pizza and make it at home, which is gonna save me well over 50%. I see that they have a $7 deal lovers menu, which includes medium one topping pizzas. So I could get a pepperoni pizza for $7 from Pizza Hut, but only if I'm buying two and it's gonna be smaller than the one that I'm picking up at Walmart. We have kids who play sports and sometimes we buy sports drinks for the various tournaments and games and meets that they're going to. And if you think this is totally unnecessary, come sit at an outdoor swim meet in July or multiple soccer games in August in Oklahoma and then tell me that you are not going to buy electrolyte replacing drinks. But I'm buying them less frequently in bottles and I'm picking up the little powder sticks that you can just put into whatever water bottle or water source you happen to be carrying. Not only does this allow me to control the actual amount of liquid because I can put one of these in a little bit more water which will encourage us to drink more, it's also more cost efficient from what I found. The prime bottles are anywhere from $1.75 to $1.88 depending on if I'm buying them in a big case or just individually at my Walmart. But right across the aisle, I can get packages of these prime stick powders that you just pour into water for around $9 and I think it comes out to about $1.50 per package. However, the best deal I found on these was at Sam's where I picked up a 20 count package for I think around $14. It came out to around 70 cents per little powder stick, which was a fantastic deal. You have seen me swap out ground beef for ground turkey so many times in budget meal plans. Usually I can get about three pounds of 8515 ground turkey 
for somewhere in the 10 to $12 range. And the same amount of ground beef, even an 80-20, which is usually less expensive than 85-15, is gonna run me somewhere in the 14 to $15 range. And if you want that ground turkey to taste a little bit more beefy like we do, I add a little bit of Worcestershire, and some of you have also recommended maybe just a little bit of beef broth base or bouillon base in the beef flavor if you wanted to make that ground turkey taste a little bit more like the ground beef that you're used to. We're standing in my pantry because I thought I would have one example of the next item to show you, but I buy it so infrequently that I don't even have one of these in my pantry right now, and that is a carton of broth. I don't buy broth very often in the cartons because number one, they take up a lot of storage space, but also I am paying such a huge markup for mostly water. A carton of broth, 32 ounces, is four cups. And the store brand at my Walmart is $1.37. It comes out to around 34 cents per cup of broth. Walmart also has a small little container of broth base that is super easy to store that makes 56 cups and it comes out to six cents per cup. That's over 80% savings if I'm buying that particular broth base instead of buying the broth in the carton. Even if I'm buying a different quality or a more expensive broth base, like maybe a better than bouillon, the price per cup per unit, it's still going to be much, much, much less than purchasing it already made up. Plus I can make up as much of it as I need for any particular recipe when I need it. Now I'm not going to say that I never buy certain things or that I always make certain swaps in my grocery haul because personally I feel like the Lord Almighty is the only one who can speak in absolutes. But I've noticed that I'm making these swaps or these changes frequently enough that it's become more the rule rather than the exception. You know what I mean? By the way, if you're looking for a meal plan for a week on a budget, exactly what I purchased and what I made with it for my family of five, you're going to want to check out this video. I just put it out. It has a complete grocery haul and meal plan for my family of five on a $150 budget. Or YouTube says you might want to watch this video and make sure that you are subscribed because I've got more videos like the budget video coming out here pretty soon.